just want to take a moment to say good morning to everybody. And um, it is good to be with you. I'm Minister Wayne, truly honored to be in front of you. I want to take a second to thank God for the gifts of the way. Uh, starting with my brother who is in the back who make this whole machine run. Uh, my brother, uh, Mike Carpenter, thank God for you, bro. Um, our amazing music ministry. Minister Lauren, you got me up here wiping tears. Thank God for you and the whole music ministry. And I truly thank God for being part of such an amazing team. They, they probably get tired of me saying it, but I don't get tired of saying it because I'm so honored that I get to serve with such a powerful ministry team. It is truly an honor and a privilege. And you, family of the way, and even visitors, it is an honor to be called your brother in Christ. Today, God has been speaking to me by way of Galatians 4, uh, chapter 4, verse 4 through 7. And my scripture reads, Galatians 4, verse 4 through 7. The word of God reads, But when the right time came, God sent his son born of a woman, subject to the law. God sent him to buy freedom for us who were slaves to the law so that he could adopt us as his very own children. And because we are his children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, prompting us to call out Abba, Father. Now you are no longer slaves, but God's own child. And since you are his child, God has made you heir. Hmm. Wow. There's a lot to unpack there. And today I'll title the sermon as God prompted me, which I felt was so right in time and for the season. This title will be the giver, the gifts, the heirs. The giver, the gifts, the heirs. I just want to invite you into understanding how God works through me, so maybe it'll be encouraging to how God sh is trying to work through you. When I teach the word of God, people, many times I'm only inviting you into a conversation that I have been having with God. So for some of those who <laughs> think that this teaching is something so special, actually, it's, it's, it's just me doing the one thing that I am very assured that God loves about me. It is my curiosity for the word and the knowledge and the wisdom and the understanding of God. I, 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 I hear it in my heart. When God looks down on me, when I'm spending time with God, and God simply says, I love when you spend time with me, child of God. And sometimes I think we make these, these kind of things so, so biblical, but when it, in reality, it's just the way we are. But because what I know is when my children choose to come to me for any and everything, I am so honored that they would think of me and think that I am the answer to all of their questions, even when I don't have all the answers. But God does. And so when I'm teaching, it's by way of me just creating space and time. For God. And what, what God has is, is brought me to teach today is simply as we move from 2020 to 2021, God is saying, tell my people, I just want more time. I, I just want more time for 2021. We find 
Paul talking to the Galatians because they, just like us, had uh, kind of strayed away. A little background, Galatia, uh, 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 the Galatian church was once a very powerful and, and prospering in the spirit type of church. The people were, were, were on fire. Matter of fact, in my study, I found out the church of Antioch is in the province of Galatia. What does that mean? Well, we, we know the church of Antioch is where the Holy Spirit first fell. So there was fire moving in the church uh, in these provinces. But, but, but here, Paul hears that they have been distracted and kind of got off track. And God, God has used Paul to say, hey, God's people. I know you are distracted. I know you going through some challenges. I know there are teachers who are teaching you some wrong things, but 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 come back to me. Come back to me. And here's what God told me that God wants us to understand for 2021. Simply this. He said, God said, tell my people in 2020, 2021. I want to find you. Remind you and reassign you. My, my, my vision, God said, son, remind my people, this is what I want to do. I want to be able to find you in, my, in the presence of me. I want to be able to remind you of who I am to you and through you and be able to reassign you not to anything new, but to the things you was already supposed to do. My God, that gave me some good encouragement. Sometimes I get overwhelmed thinking God want me to do a lot of new things. But actually, sometimes, a lot of times, God has already appointed the things that we're supposed to do. And we've had visions and we've thought about them, but we've got off track. And God is simply saying in this season where we're moving from 20 to 21, where God is saying, come back to me. It was interesting as I read the scripture and I thought about uh, 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 how we started 2020 and every church in the world was looking for the best saying of how we see it. 2020 vision. And I laugh and I hear God laugh. I bet you didn't see this. Huh. <laughs> That's why it's important that we get in the presence of God and come back to God over and over and over. But one of the struggles can be when I looked at the church of Galatia, it's the same struggle that we struggle with. And God said, tell my people that the biggest struggle sometimes is not the enemy or anybody else, but my church just gets too familiar with me. I looked up this word familiar and I found something very, very, it, it caught me. Look, look at this one definition of familiar right here. Look at this. Familiar. Possibly known but imperfectly remembered. My goodness gracious. I had to sit with that thing. Let, sit, let it sit right there for a minute, uh, Mike, please. Let it sit right there for a minute. I, I want them to get this. Let's just look at that for about a couple of seconds. Familiar. This is what God is saying. I'm possibly known, but imperfectly remembered. And God is saying, in this season, I want you to move from just possibly knowing me to totally knowing me and, and, and striving for a high level of remembrance. Here in Galatia, it starts out, and, and, and Paul says, but when the right time came, God sent his son, born of a woman, subject to the law. So right there, we'll start with the giver. Now, God told me to break, break me down in a few ways that maybe people didn't see because I just want to put myself in position where my people can find me so I can remind them and reassign them. That's all this is about. 2021, we're going to get some stuff, y'all. We're going to recover some stuff. Some peace and some joy and some assurance and some power. But we must push, put ourselves in position where God can find us, remind us, and reassign us. 
And if we're going to do that, then we have to come to a different understanding of God that is not the familiar understanding that we've been operating in. Paul says, in the right time came. When the right time came, God sent. I want to give you four points. Two of them very familiar, two of them might not be so, of talking about the giver. First, God said, simply remind my people that I am the giver of the amazing grace and the all everlasting mercy. I like to flip them around and say mercy and grace, because many times I don't think we understand that before we can ever receive grace, we need mercy. And I just want to remind you, child of God, that even with all you've been through this year and all the decisions you might have made that wasn't aligned to what you think God, God wants to find you under his mercy and grace. No matter what you've done this year, no matter what you've been through, there's this amazing grace and this everlasting mercy that is still just for you. And I just want to remind you, I don't take it for granted that we always remember this. The second thing God told me to remind my people that I am the giver of answered prayers. Hallelujah. Sometimes I think we forget this. If I was to ask you, uh, 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 everybody in the chat, uh, do, you, do you really know that God is the God of answered prayers? And yeah, we would say, yeah. But then I would ask you, how often have you been praying if you truly believe God is the God of answered prayers? And I don't think we'll get the same amount of yes. I want to encourage us as we move from 2020 to 2021 to understand that God is the God of answered prayers. How is that connected to Galatians? Well, if you understand Galatians, it's pointing to the birth of the baby Jesus, right? And, 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 and if you study the birth of the baby Jesus, uh, something interesting f happens in, 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 in Luke 2, in, in about 23 to, to the 30s. It's something interesting that, that, that I don't know if we're reminded. People were praying for the Messiah, so when, 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 when Paul reminds us that, that the gift was born, there were people praying for this moment. In, 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 in Luke 2, it shows us that there's a, a brother named Simeon. But what I love, it's also a prophet named Anna. It says she had been dwelling in the temple for so long. Check it out yourself. Luke 2, 23 through about 36, they, they have been praying. Simeon pretty much was in a position where he said, I can go now and I've seen the Messiah. Child of God, I'm encouraging you to stay in a position and posture of believing God as the God of answered prayers. Now, here's the part where we shift a little bit because I like this part. These are the parts that God spoke to me and I, I had to sit with. God said, remind my people that I am not just the God that gives to you, hallelujah, but I am the God that gives to God's self. Oh, Jesus, that's good to me. Oh, listen, I, I haven't heard that too often. Have you heard the God that gives to God's self? That's what God showed me. Where? Where? Let me, let me check. If you go to Genesis, in the beginning, in the beginning, it starts out, what did God give to God's self? If you read, it said, then God said, let us make man, human beings in our own image to be like us. Who is us? Ha. God, the Father, God, the Son, God, the Holy Spirit. Let us make men to be like us in our own image. Jump down to 28. And then, say, then God blessed them and said, be fruitful and multiply. Then God looked over all he had made and saw that it was good. Child of God, do you understand that God made you and I? 
for God's self. God exemplified that sometimes we have to bless ourselves. You got to be in position and posture in 2021 to be a blessing to you. What does that look like? You and God have to figure that out. But I know being in the presence of God, God simply wanted communication with God's creation. God blessed God's self with you and I. The last piece of the giver might catch you off guard too. God bless God's self, watch this, with rest. Oh, hallelujah. Listen to me. Have you heard that one before? <laughs> this thing took me somewhere. I had to get out of it. Chapter 2 in Genesis, I mean, it's the beginning. God gave God self rest. Oh, I know this one's going to challenge a lot of us because, boy, we ain't been doing good with this one. Hallelujah. Chapter 2. So the creation of the heavens on earth and everything in them was complete. On the seventh day, God had finished God's work and God blessed the seventh day and declared it holy because it was the day when he rested from all of his works of creation. Hallelujah. 2021, we got to do better with giving ourselves rest. I'm claiming a balanced life in 2021. Because Lord knows 2020 has been so out of balance and we ain't even see it coming. God is saying, if you are going to exemplify me, you got to be a, one of my children who understand that I am the giver of grace and mercy. I am the giver of answer prayers. I am the giver of rest. But I am also the giver of life. Come to know this God. The God that gives, but not just to us, but to God's self. That one can preach by itself. God gave to God's self. You and I as gifts and rest. Hallelujah. If we continue in Galatians, we see that Paul moves on. He said, God sent his son, born of a woman, subject to the law. God sent him to buy freedom for us who were slaves to the law so that he could adopt us as his very own children. And because we are his children, God sent the Holy Spirit of his son. Of course, we know the gifts. But let me tell you what God told me to do. God said, tell them, I sent Jesus as the gift that came and the Holy Spirit as the gift that stayed. Listen to me, child of God. I sent Jesus as the gift that came and the Holy Spirit as the gift that stayed. Because many times we feel like Jesus ain't close enough to us. But may I remind you so that you may be reassigned, reassigned that the Holy Spirit stayed. And there's victory when you come to that understanding that there was a Godhead that sent the Son that came, but the Holy Spirit that stayed. Hallelujah. That's good to me. She, whoo, I found myself all encouraged when God was dropping that on me. And then in that, in that same breath, God said, child, I, 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 you, your brothers, your sisters are the gift too. You are the gift too. I said, good God, God, 2020 ain't, ain't fat. It ain't felt like a gift. And God said, that's your emotions. Hallelujah. But in the spirit, there's a gifting and a shifting going on. Because I am the God of it all. And God said, you have to stay reminded, but make sure you remind my children, my sisters and brothers, that you are a gift of God. Not only are you a gift of God, but you have gifts 
in you. If we went back to Genesis, God said, be fruitful. fruitful. What is being fruitful? It's bearing gifts. But the problem is, and this is what God sat me down and talked to me. I was all happy, glad, and excited. Yeah, God, yes. And then God said, but the adversary. Shut up. The adversary. Ooh, this one, it got good. This one, it got good. Help me, Holy Spirit. Child of God, you are a gift. And many of us would attest, we don't feel like a gift in this season. I'm in my house. I'm not able to touch people. I'm going to just be transparent with you. Oh, my God, please pray for pastors and ministers in this season because I'm talking to so many brothers and so many sisters who do God's work. And it is a struggle because we're disconnected from the people and people are struggling because they thought that their gift had to be in the building. But in this season, God is saying, I didn't say your gift was in the building. I didn't say your gift was in the house. I didn't say your gift was in that job. I didn't say your gift was in that marriage. I didn't say your gift was in that relationship. I said the gift is inside of you and there's nothing that you can do about it. But there's still an adversary. Hallelujah. Here we go. Here we go. Rock with me. John, John 10 talks to us. He got, God led me to John 10 and 10. Listen, simplified. The adversary, 10 and 10 says, the thief's purpose is to steal, kill, and destroy. But my purpose is to give them rich and satisfying life. Child of God, because you're a gift with a gift, thing, there's a thief that wants to steal. Here's the good news. The thief only wants to steal that which is of value. Sata. Listen to me, child of God. There are gifts that we have been holding. There are gifts that we've had visions about. There are gifts. And God told me, I said, God, this ain't easy, though. Some of our gifts been laying dormant for a long time. Some of our gifts haven't even been found. Some of our gifts we don't even know about. Some of our gifts have been so overwhelmed by life that hasn't felt like a gift at all. And we know we supposed to have impact. But God, show us what we must do. Hallelujah. And God says, son, tell my people you must unpack to have impact. Santa. You must unpack to have impact. What, 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 what must we unpack? Well, we must once again come to a place where we understand this God that is the giver. But, but we must come to a place where we understand we are a gift. And when we come to a place where we unpack, the adversary will be right there trying to make sure that you don't unpack your gifts. I, I know that the unpacking can be struggle, but somebody say this 2021 coming up, I am going to unpack so that I can have impact. I am going to unpack some of the things that I have believed about myself. Oh, some of these these belief systems that are not of God. I am going to unpack some of the things that I haven't dealt with by, 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 by going to therapy. I am going to unpack some of the things that I have never discussed. Until. I'm going to unpack some of the pain, I'm going to unpack some of the drama. But God is saying, if we're going to unpack, it's going to be a process. <laughs> Me and God also talked about how the child of God, just like we get familiar with God, sometimes we can get excited just about the gift. And God said, tell my children that in this season of understanding your gifting, we have to move from just seeing it and knowing it to believing it and receiving it. Hallelujah. God said, don't, don't condemn nobody. But many of the saints come to experience, to church to experience other people's gifts. 
because we don't believe that we have a gift ourselves. So we come to church to experience other people's gifts and we get all excited about everything we see and know, but that is not enough as we shift into the gifting. We must come to a place where we unpack the impact so that we understand that this is not an experience that we just supposed to see and know, but we supposed to believe it and receive it because something can happen and something will change when we believe it and receive it. God gave me, God gave me a little, 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 little sample here. <laughs> I, I, I know you, you might not be able to see it, right? Hey, hey, this is a gift. And it's a gift, right? And, and getting the gift, I get excited. Oh, I got a gift. I got a gift just for me. Somebody thought about me, there's a gift. And, and it's, and it's an, thank God for the gift. But God said, tell my people many times this is what you do with the gift. I'm going to come back before I unpack it. And God said, in this season, no, child of God, the excitement about the gift is not enough. There has to be an unpacking of the gift so that we can experience all that God has for us. You see, sometimes I don't think we understand that Jesus was sent to help us with the outside job. Hallelujah. And the Holy Spirit was sent to help us with the inside job. There's going to have to be some unpacking. God, God is saying that, that I know there's some heavy stuff on you. I know uh, you had some childhood traumas. I know that you had some experiences in college. I know you had some experiences in your adolescence. I know you, you, you experienced a, a divorce. I know you experienced things in 2020 and 2019 and 2018. But child of God, I need you to unpack that. And I need you to unpack that. And I need you to unpack that. And I need you to unpack that. You to unpack that. Because see, until we unpack things we can't even get to the gift here's the thing God told me to tell you not only will you have to unpack but see here's the gift right and the gift is still wrapped so sometimes not only do you got to unpack you got to unwrap hallelujah and the Holy Spirit told me to tell somebody that in 2021 we ain't just unpacking we unwrapping why is the unwrapping important because sometimes the unpacking is just the stuff on top of us or inside of us but the unwrapping is the stuff around us. You might have to get rid of some people this year. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, look. Look. But the gift, it, I still ain't I still ain't got to the gift. Hallelujah. I got through the, the part that I thought was the toughest. But now the, this is the hard part. <laughs> When you get to the root of the challenges of your life, child of God, don't expect it to get easier because like my statement say, right before the breakthrough, sometimes God will allow life to try to break you. But here's what I'm going to tell you, child of God. If you choose to go ahead and get through the hard stuff, see, then you get to your connection. See, then you get to the thing that can guide you. See, then you get to the thing that connects you back to God. I'm telling somebody that in this season, you have to unpack and unwrap the stuff because God has a gift in you my God hallelujah so the gift is not just the, the Jesus that came and the Holy Spirit that stayed but the gift is you and I somebody put in the comments I'm unpacking I'm unwrapping because in this season in 2021 I am going to get and I'm going to be the gift. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The giver, the gifts, the air. Not going to be before you too much longer. The air. The airs. Do you know, child of God? That all the reason for Jesus coming, showing us the way on the outside, and all the reason for the Holy Spirit staying, being able to work on us inside, is so that the world can experience, in, experience us 
as an inheritance. But it isn't until you understand that we are heirs. God said, here, tell my people that the reason that I and Jesus is called the king of kings, listen to me, is because when a king is king of a kingdom, but the, cha- the king has children, and he wants them to move in kingship or queenship or be rulers of another nation. The child cannot rule where the father is. The child cannot rule where the king is. So the, if the father, if the mother wants to, to, to put their child in position to have dominion and be rulers of their own kingdom, the child has to be moved to another place. Hallelujah. And this is why God set us on earth. To bring heaven to earth. This is the kingdom that we're supposed to have dominion, child of God. God gave me a story. And the story goes, there was a, a young lady. She, 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 she grew up in a very royal family. And, and, and the royal family had a lot of internal issues. She was the only child. In her teenage years, she did something that caused her to bring a lot of shame and pain on the family. So in her own pain and shame, she chose to abandon the family. But the father and the mother never, ever gave up on the daughter. The father and the mother got older and they both got sick. The daughter was out living her own life, which was no reflection to her heirness, which no was was no reflection to her royalty. Doing things on her own. But her parents knew that they were getting sick and old. And so they hired the one with one assignment. Or shall I say two? Our daughter is the heiress. Of all that we have. So your assignment, the one, is to make sure that all of our things we leave are intact for her. But because we believe that she won't come back if you don't keep track, the one, we are also hiring you with the assignment to track our daughter for the rest of her life. To never lose sight. I don't care if she's across the nation. You do what you, the parents were forethinking that their child may need them even when they were gone. And so the parents set the one with an assignment to make sure that the child was tracked. The parents passed. The daughter knew, but didn't show up. That added more pain. But there came a time when she came upon her own sickness. She found herself laying in the hospital bed, fighting a battle that she couldn't handle. And the one showed up. And the one came and said, you don't know me, but I know you more than you think. And I've been tracking you for a long time. I have never left you. And your your parents, being thoughtful and considerate, have, have, have assigned me to show up whenever you might need me. And I see that this is a time that you may need me. Now, the inheritance is yours, but not until you sign this paper which represents you believing and receiving your title, do you get access to what has been surrendered? Oh, the daughter didn't believe this person, the one, on the first day. But the one stayed sitting in the room. The doctors came in on the second day and said, if you don't get the medicine, the, 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 the treatment, You will die in two days. The one stays sitting there looking, saying, I can help you. 
she still wouldn't receive it on the second day. But on the third day, she woke up with a different way of thinking. And she said, you are still here. And the one said, this is my assignment. And she said, I am going to die if I don't try. And she signed the paperwork. And instantly she inherited everything she needed to continue to live the life, but not just live, but live in abundance. John 10 and 10 said, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but I came to give them life and not just life, life in abundance, child of God. There is an inheritance for me and you that we must unpack and believe it and receive it. The story ends by saying, not only did she get well, not only did she inherit everything she, 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 she was supposed to, she ended up having a family and blessing all of her children and other generations. And I came by to tell somebody, generations depend on us accepting our inheritance. Child of God, you are a gift. And there are many gifts in you. And in moving from the season of gifting to the season of shifting, we got to make up our minds that I understand God as the giver. I understand Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit as the gifts. But I also understand that I am a gift to this world and I have an inheritance that can bless generations. We have to move from just knowing the word, seeing the blessings, to positioning ourselves to receiving and believing our inheritance. There's a shifting that can happen when we do this. And in 2021, I hear God saying there will be a recovery that will blow your mind. If you just make up your mind to be in position and posture to receive the inheritance. I'll close right here. I'm encouraged. God led me to Daniel 10. I thought it was so on point that we're moving into the 21 day fast. And in Daniel 10, it talks about Daniel praying for 21 days. Listen to me, child of God. You, you know, in Galatians 4, it said God showed up at the right time. And in 2021, we, we got to trust God for the right time. Proverbs 16 and 9 says a man makes his plans, but God is the one that makes his ways. I know somebody is saying, but Brother Wayne, I lost my way. Can I give you some good news? You can't lose a way that wasn't your way to lose in the first place, child of God. Hallelujah. But Daniel has an encounter with the angel. And the angel said, I, I heard all your prayers, but we was up there battling there's a battle going on in the heavens and there was something trying to stop me from getting to you. Child of God, I, I want you to know that this year we're going to get our 21 blessing. Daniel, 21 days. Us, 2021. Somebody put in a quote, I'm getting my 21 blessing. I know 2020 tried to take us out. I know 2020 crushed us in some ways, but guess what? I don't care what you're surrounded by. You serve a God that is a giver and you serve Jesus that came with all power and you serve the Holy Spirit that is in you that stayed and you have an inheritance. And in 2021, we are going to get our 21 blessing. And when the, when the angels show up in due time, hallelujah, there will be a recovery of all and some. Child of God, I just want to encourage you as I close that you have to understand 
that God is saying, in 2021, may I find you, remind you, and reassign you. May I find you in my presence. May I find you in the word. May I find you disconnected from some of the things that you need to unpack. May I find you disconnected from some of those bad behaviors. May I find you in a position where your belief system is upgraded. May I find you knowing that the Holy Spirit never left you because the Holy Spirit is the one. May I remind you that in the right time, not your time, but in the right time, I, God, will blow your mind. But your job and your assignment is to be in the right place and in the right space. A lot of times, child of God, this isn't a physical space and sometimes it is, but it's in a place, in a position of posture, a mind space. God is saying in 2021, I'm going to make you wealthy, healthy and wise. But I need to remind you so that when I reassign you, Nothing new. Hear me. Don't be overwhelmed by thinking God wants you to do new things. Sometimes God does. But truth be told, when we were knitted in our mother's womb, we had every gifting already installed in us. So God is saying, I'm trying to stir up and reassign you to the things that you had visions about 10 years before that happened. The things that you was thinking about in 2017 and 18, the, the, the buildings and, the, and, 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 and all of the visions, I'm trying to reassign you in 2021. And I close with this. 2020 was our, our year of hope. And God said, tell my people we, we, we add to that. In 2021, we're going to have hope and assurance. Ha. Remember, God rested. And I pray that in 2021, I claim in 2021 that us, us, the children of God, will have rested assurance. There's an inheritance, child of God. And we must unpack so that we may impact. We're going to do some mind-blowing things in 2021. I'm claiming it. I'm believing it. And I'm receiving it. I'm not just getting excited, which is the emotions, but I'm getting ignited by the Spirit. May God bless you. May God be with us as we move from just being excited to ignited. As we move from just having hope, but to assurance. As we move from the season of gifting to the season of shifting, as we move into the 21 day blessing, there, are, there is an inheritance, but it can only be brought and sustained by the one. Holy Spirit, we are here. Have your way. Be blessed, family. Be blessed.